Hey guys, what's going on? Hope you're doing great. Today we're going to be taking a look at our new project, the Device Promo Kit. Uh, so basically this project is going to enable you to mock up all of your applications or websites or whatever you want to appear on some of the latest Apple devices including the iPad, the tablet as well as the iMac. So we're going to run through a couple of these scenes in Final Cut Pro and show you exactly what's possible. So here we are inside of Final Cut Pro and the first thing I'm going to do is set up a new project. Uh, and so what you're going to want to do is set it at 30 frames per second. It also works at 29.97 frames. And the reason that we're doing that is to make sure that the 3D data matches up with the rendered data. So we're just going to call this uh, device promo. And we're going to go into titles and already it's selected. And what you're going to see is it's got all the sections broken down into the computers, into the icons that you also need, the laptops. Uh, as well as the tablets below and then all of your titles that you're going to be using in below that what I'm going to be doing is I just want to actually import my media to that we're going to be using with the project and I've got it all set up here already so what you've got here is a screen that fits for the MacBook one that fits for the iPad and one that fits for the iMac as well as a full screen one so I can show you what happens if you put a, a much larger image let's say for example you've got a website exported at a ratio of maybe a hundred to a thousand uh, a thousand in height which might be the case here uh, what you'll be doing then and then also a background image so that we can show you how the background system works so I've imported it all let's go back into titles and then we'll select one of the titles to bring in and I think this one looks fine here so we've got computer six and I am going to first of all go back into my media so that we can select that straight away and what I'm going to do is select the drop zone and then select one of the images and what you're going to notice that if your image is the right size so let's say for example the the exact same screen size as the iMac in this case uh, then it will automatically adjust it to the screen if it doesn't that's fine as well you can just mess around with the scale as well as the position pro, uh, tools here but what happens if you've got a different size set? So let's say, for example, you've got this much larger, um, completely off ratio image. Let's say we import that. Now, obviously, it's going to, it's not going to be specifically where we need it to be. And let's first make sure that the scale is correct. So there we can, we can just be okay with that. And then we can bring it all the way down as the image that we want was right at the top. And that works as well. So really the um, the drop zone system is quite simple. There's, there shouldn't be many problems there. Uh, as we go further down, what we're going to notice is all the different settings that we can include. So the first thing is all the reflections that we can drop or increase depending on what we want there. We normally like to have uh, much more of a reflection as it just creates more realism with the project. So as we can see there, the reflection is moving across the screen. Further along, we have the uh, the background settings. And also what you will notice in some of these, this one's not the case, but if I just bring in another title quickly that you can actually see here, we also have the option to change the drop shadow opacity. So right now you can notice that there's a bit of a drop shadow there, but we can turn that right off if we want to, or we can really pump it right up, depending on what you're looking for. But uh, normally I just like to keep it around 30 to 40%. But on this computer, we don't have a drop shadow as there's no drop shadow showing on the screen at all. So further along, we have the backgrounds and you have the options of having a solid, a gradient, a drop zone for which you can use your image here, a shape, this is quite a new one, as well as just having none. So if you had something else behind you, you could keep that on screen. So I suppose we should first show you what, uh, let's show you with a drop zone as that's what we're gonna be using. So we can go into our media here. I'm going to select the title again and I'm going to click on the image. So now I have that image behind the computer for the duration of the title being on screen. But let's say we want a direction and we can do that. We can actually select from six different options uh, in addition to no option at all. We can go left to right, uh, right to left, up to down and zoom in a couple of things as well. So over time, you'll notice that the background is moving from left to right as that's what we've selected. Now, what we also have the option to do is to two-tone the background. So we can actually click there and then just select two different tones we'd like the uh, colors to be. So right now, it's asking me what it wants the blacks to be. So I can say I would like those to be red. 
and the white side would normally just keep it at white, but you actually have the options to change it to, let's say maybe a gray color if you wanted to. Now this all comes down to the style preferences that you have for your project. And we like to make sure that you have as much customizability as possible. So let's try something different and let's try one of the shapes. So if you go further down, you're going to see here we have shape pattern and also the shape colors. And you have the choice between three shapes. It's blocks, lines, and spheres. And then from there, you get the option of changing the colors. So let's say, for example, we wanted to use more of a red palette. So I'm going to just copy that hex code and then paste it to the next one just because I want it to be a little bit darker than that one. I didn't want the, the colors to change too much. And that's simply how you change the shape colors. You also have the option to add a vignette. You can just pump that up over here and you notice around the edges it's getting a little bit dark and you can go all the way to the 100% and just notice how intense that gets. So I would recommend keeping this fairly low, maybe around the 30% mark. Going into the gradients, you obviously have the options here to change your colors and then you also have the options to move the rotation. So you can have that gradient appearing as you would any direction on the screen. Moving further down, what we have is the background elements. Now these are the different accents that you can actually use on the screen. So for example, if we use circles and if I wanna uh, select that on the right hand side, so to the top right, you can see that that's already appearing there. Uh, another one I also like is the dots and that's already appearing over there, but we wanna put that on the bottom right. So these really come down to your style choice. As you can see now, I have those dots moving and the circles moving. Another added feature we have is the background shape. So if we turn this up to 40%, what you're gonna be noticing is that there's a rectangle in the background that will move the whole time. Right now it's behind the computer. So what we can do is actually just shift that over. I'm gonna just manually uh, type in the position that I wanna move it up here until I find it in the right spot. So that looks quite nice. And over there you can find your colors. So let's just say that we wanted to keep it at a, a much darker color. And you also have the option to add the drop shadow, which you can already see over here. You can turn that right off if need be. You can blur that drop shadow a bit more if you wanted to. You can see that that is blurred out there a bit. And you could also move the position around. You could also change the rotation speed. So right now, as you can see, it's going a little bit slow. But let's say, for example, we wanted to change complete direction and, and really go quite quickly. So instead of minus 3.47, we can make that 15. And what's going to happen now is that is going to speed quite quickly along there. So those are the options that you have for each of the titles. As you can see, quite a lot of customizability, ensuring that your video will stand out from the rest. So let's take a look at doing a couple more examples here. So what we're gonna be doing is bringing in this song here, and this is the same song that was used in the preview video. So in each one of those beats, what we wanna do is to showcase the devices. So, so let's say, for example, we want to use computer two first, and now bear in mind what's gonna happen is that it's gonna be quite a quick cut. So first of all, this is already way too quick. So what we can do, first of all, is to just select our media. So we're gonna select the drop zone and then find our iMac screen and apply the clip. So we've got that there. And what I like to do is to create a new compound clip. So I'm gonna call that computer two. So it's uh, consistent with the title here and with the title in the uh, media browser. And then I can actually just shorten that to the, to the point at which I want it to start. So I, let's say for example, I don't want this initial bit here because it's still coming in. So what I wanna do is actually bring it in later, like right about there. So I'm gonna start it there and then just watch that play through. It seems fine. So we can go back to the beginning. Now I wanna play it with the music on and uh, make sure that I can hear when the beat stops. So that's about the spot where the music stops. So I can pull that all the way back there. So what's gonna happen now on that first beat, I've got the video playing and then it's gonna to cut to the next title. So we can just do that for another two and I'm gonna do one of the iPads and one of the laptops. So let's do laptop eight first. So I can play that ahead. So this is where I'm gonna make the cut for this one. And then finally the tablet. So we can bring in tablet three. Now 
Right, so now what I can do is select the drop zone for the MacBook and fill that in straight away. As you can see that it fits right into the screen and into the same with the iPad. Uh, and then I'll find the tablet one is right over here. And we're gonna put on a background. What we're gonna do is to use the gradient. Uh, for this one is the compound clip, so I'll just have to go in there, select my title and select the gradient that I wanna have. I'm going to change it to a more pink to a uh, bluish purple. So that looks quite nice. I would probably need to copy these colors across to the other two. And to do that, I'm just co copying the hex code and then going back and then selecting this one and pasting. All right, so now you can see I have that gradient on all the titles there. What I also wanna do is to use that shape in the background. So what we can do is go back into this compound clip for the computer go down to the bottom and I'm going to be turning on the shape. So I'm going to make that around 40%. And what I want to do for this one is to just make these all very dark as well as we did in the previous example. Now what I'm going to do is actually bump up the radius to 800. So this is huge and I'm going to move this about to minus 100. And now what I can also do is to change the point at which the rotation starts so that it looks a little bit different. So as you can see there, the rotation is being changed. So now what happens if I start it back, you can see that we have that shape that comes in just to make things also a little bit more interesting. For the next one, what I'm gonna do is to select the, uh, one of the crosses. So I'm gonna put that on and I'm gonna put this in the bottom left. And the final title, I'm also just going to add uh, one of the accents here. This time we're going to use the lines and we're going to put that in the top right. So now when that plays, you can see that the lines are coming on. Unfortunately, because that cut is so quick, we don't really notice it. So we can turn that off and just try another one. This time we're going to use the dots and middle right is perfect. So that's, let me play that back with music and you can check what it looks like. Cool, and just as simple as that, we have a pretty cool mockup for this website that we're creating. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll link to the project in the description below and make sure you check back on the next video where we're gonna be showing you how we created the preview video using this project. All the best guys, enjoy the project, bye.